Um, so for our next presentation, we will have Mr. Sheikh Mohammed Bilal of Just White Hat, and he will be discussing easy SEO wins in 2021 for small, medium size businesses. So, Mr. Bilal, you can start your presentation now. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have all of you on board here. Um, and thanks to thanks, I think Global Conference as well to give me an opportunity uh, to kind of present um, um, this with you guys today. Um, so I have prepared a presentation that I'm going to just go through with all together with you all you. And uh, meanwhile, if you guys have any questions in regards, um, we can take it up from there. All right. So, um, easy, easy SEO wins in 2021. Uh, this is for small, medium uh, sized businesses. Um, some of things are also applicable for like enterprise customers, but mostly I would say uh, the process is something relatable. Um, these are the topics for the discussion today. So, we are going to be discussing like SEO, like in terms of what it is, why should we opt in for SEO, um, SEO vertical importance in 2021. Uh, moving forward, we'll be discussing a bit more about organic SEO opportunity, um, SEO within the sale funnel, how it's relatable, how it is inside the funnel, um, local versus global SEO as well in terms of like how, how we can actually make a bit of a comparison in terms of like a localized SEO uh, and have a head-on-head -head, uh, comparison between a global and local. Um, moving forward, we'll discuss a bit more about search evolution over years how people search that's really really interesting in terms of like you have to you have to know your audience in terms of like you know how people actually search on the internet and then some pointers related to um the pr um and off-site and backlinking which can be um a valuable asset for um the startups all right so an introduction to seo um so basically seo is an intent based traffic um Intent based, you know, like you already have an intent, you're searching for something, like you can see the screen uh, in front of you. So, CBD wholesale in China. So, a person who's searching for this query already have like an intent of, um, you know, opting into like maybe buying or having a perspective about, you know, uh, getting CBD um, wholesaler uh, from China. Um, so, it's like an intent based traffic, it's not something relatable to like social media or any other channel from the marketing, but search itself is a bit more refined source when it comes to digital marketing. Since uh, you have an intent defined and it's more, I would say, a person is looking for something, yeah? So like you are like catering up your results and your like search results and, and you are optimizing your website around it and you are popping up in those particular queries and people are going and seeing what they wanna see. So it's not like, you know, like you're targeting audience and whatsoever. Um, SEO actually, SEO or overall search carries high conversion rate because you're not, you're not targeting random audience. Uh, people are searching for something they are looking for. Um, it um, has some competitiveness in terms of like uh, how you actually, how the whole process is. Uh, search traffic behavior is something, you know, like in terms of uh, you have to make sure it's relatable in terms of like, you know, um, the traffic behavior of from the search is particularly different from what you see um, uh, within like some direct traffic or maybe somewhere um, inside, uh, uh, if you have a different source, you know, like uh, something coming from direct, uh, maybe social might have, you know, like the metrics we have been seeing in our experience uh, from the from the industry, uh, we have been seeing like a lot of uh, figures um, and uh, in terms of when it comes to engagement, you know, like the traffic behavior that we get from SEO and search is really, really, really amazing because you are actually opting in or you're showing information to someone who actually wants to see something. Um, if your website is worth it, then definitely, you know, like uh, it's going to be uh, an awesome opportunity for each and every business. And finally, it's free. So you don't have to pay to get ranked. You don't pay Google, you don't pay Bing to get you ranked on top of search, but you actually optimize your website. Uh, you made it as accessible as possible for the audience. Um, you work on user engagement, and finally, you get yourself on the top spot of the search. So overall, search engine works like crawling, indexing, and serving. So like they crawl the web, and they index the web, and then they serve, and they rank the total website in terms of how much quality it carries. Um, moving forward, so basically, what is search engine opportunity for each one of um, us the, as a local business, as a startup, as a scale-up? Um, so basically... 
these terminologies, which I'm using right now, they're applicable to at least around 87.3% of the web. The web figures were taken from web vitals, so web.dev, the sources authenticate. So overall, around 87.3% of the web right now is lacking in terms of these five metrics. Um, we have brands which are having, uh, I would say, uh, really low performance when it comes to like speed. So for instance, if you're loading their website on a mobile or an, uh, on an average 3G or a 4G connection, um, it will take, you know, like a lot of time to load up. Uh, then you have SEO UX elements, some UX related issues which can affect your performance dramatically. Um, we often coin a term that, you know, how much time you require to kind of, you know, load up your content uh, above the fold. So like whenever somebody is actually opening up your website, how long does it take to see something uh, on the screen? Um, also the brand visibility, a lot of brands are like, you know, just beginning with SEO and they don't have much branding done. So that's also kind of, you know, um, heard the opportunity overall, um, and a user focused content strategy are then, you know, like that's a super important because content is considered the backbone for SEO. And if you are missing out in terms of content, um, which is user centric, which is not it just search centric because if you are just centric your your search and your content around search engines you might be losing a lot of things you know so like you are losing clients you are losing rankings um in 2021 2020 you know like what works is like you know you have to make sure like you are catering all the needs from the users um so where is seo within the sales funnel so basically seo is on the top of the funnel so we have three funnels here so we have the top of the funnel we have the middle we have the bottom uh, in, in, in the, in the top, we have like search traffic. We can have email marketing. We can have a promotional video. We can have a press release. So like a source of traffic, you know, like top of the funnel. So it's not like, you know, you will get ranked, you will get traffic and it can ultimately kind of result in, in more business or more sales. You also have to work on this um, middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. So it's not something like, you know, if somebody is like an SEO expert or an SEO consultant, you hire someone, uh, someone really good and he works or he, she works on your brand and uh, they kind of, you know, um, increase your search traffic dramatically. It will not yield in the sales until or unless your middle and the bottom of the funnel is also optimized. OK, now you, there's like certain stuff you can actually do. You can actually offer discounts. You can offer exclusive offers. You can free offer free trial events or something like that. This is something, you know, like it's like an activity in the middle to facilitate the, the conversion, you know, like so like you are you are um, sharing some some a good incentive with your prospective leads, you know, um, also, uh, in the bottom of the funnel, so like the activity we can like you can put over there is like something like the, a demo, a feedback, a success story, a comparison sheet, um, just to make sure that the lead converts. You know, so overall, like um, none of the SEOs in the world they hold the magic wand that can you know like bring you um, uh, a, like business or leads. It also depends on how you are being set up uh, concretely in a house in terms of like you know catering those leads, reaching out to them, and making sure that they convert. You know, because like overall you're getting info or you're getting sales so if it's if you're getting sales online from the website you have to make sure that you're offering some kind of a discount or something appealing for the customers um, uh, highlighting your unique selling points uh, I would say uh, clearly to the customers so that they are convinced you know like it's not just uh, driving traffic will bring you sales you also have to be more convincing inside the inside your platform inside your website that you know in terms of like what you are doing or what you're displaying is something which is valuable for the customers Okay, um, going to be a going a bit comparison about like local SEO and, and global SEO as well. So in terms of like, what's the difference? I'll, I'll just keep like the higher pointers here in terms of like, what's the major difference? Um, we have local SEO, which is comprised of localized results. Um, localized means like, you know, like if you are, if you are uh, sitting uh, in, in, in LA, and you are searching for something and Google is going to give you some results which are like closer to your vicinity, you know, like, for instance, um, I'm looking for um, I'm looking for a, a, maybe like a flight uh, flight school. Yeah. So if I am in L.A. and I'm searching for um, a flight school, uh, it, it won't show me something uh, from from Vegas. It's going to show me something from from nearby vicinity. Yeah. So that's how the localized results work. So look like Google algorithm, how it works is um, they, they take your location. Um, they serve you the results, which are mostly, I would say, close proximity to your to your location. When it's when you are searching for something, which they recognize it as like a local 
query. Now, their algorithms are quite, quite, I would say, um, intelligent. They can differentiate in terms in terms of like what a query me like mean. You know, like Google recently launched Eat. Um, it's called. Uh, they also have like a machine learning. They have Bert introduced as well. So basically, they can actually understand the context of what a people, what person is searching for. So context means like what do they want exactly? Like what is their intent behind a search query? Do they want to learn something? Do, do they want to buy something? Or they are just getting their, some, themselves educated about something? They are really brilliant nowadays in terms of differentiating that particular information when you're researching something. Because Google, as an end, is a search engine. They want to make sure that they, they offer a good user experience to their searchers. And if they are not doing so, they are, they're missing a lot, I would say, in total. So overall, they just make sure that you know they keep, the, uh, they keep making our like SEO's life miserable. Um, I'm saying that because like it's, it's that's also good because it's also like making the website uh, like the whole web a more sustainable place, uh, more trustworthy space for for the consumers. Uh, so overall, uh, how it works is like if you are setting up somewhere locally, you're gonna be served something you know from that particular vicinity, which makes more sense rather than something you know like which doesn't make sense for you. So. Um, Local SEO. So, for instance, if you are doing SEO within a close proximity or, or, or a particular country, uh, you confront with a lower competition. Um, it's easier to structure a website for local SEO. Um, you apply or you create a Google My Business profile um, that also kind of reinforces your branding and reinforces your, your total overall SEO efforts. And you can also make your website in, lo in a localized language. You know, that's also kind of uh, something which can be a win-win situation for you when you are doing a local SEO. Okay, when it comes to global SEO, so yeah, you are talking about global results now. So you, like, you are not defined with, you know, like, okay, I'm located in the Netherlands. Um, I want to rank myself in that particular area. No, you are maybe targeting an audience in, in EU or maybe the whole world, okay, who knows? So for instance, let's take an example like Adidas. Adidas is one of our clients. Uh, we have been working with them for the last three years. Now the structure of the website, how it works is that they have different subdomains. And like, for instance, like for, we were engaged in their search marketing for, for the Middle Eastern region. So when it comes to Middle Eastern region, we have five countries. We have UAE, we have Oman, we have Bahrain, we have uh, Qatar, we have, um, you know, like we, like we have five countries here. So overall inside the Gulf, we have five countries and how it's distributed is that they have five different structures, which are, which are there to kind of, you know, like cater the needs of each and every particular country. So you can see adidas.ae for UAE region. You can see adidas.bh for Bahrain. You can see uh, adidas.sa for, for, for the for kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So this is how it works because you are like localizing your search. But overall, you also see adidas.com. Yeah, that's like the global domain because it's like a global, global brand. Yeah. So overall, how it works is like you structure it up in such a way that you have localized languages as well inside the website. And how it works is for a particular uh, country or a region, we set up a geo IP redirect. So for instance, like if somebody's IP is coming from, uh, from Malaysia, we are going to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, taking them to the Malaysian variant or the Malaysian website on its own. So that's how the whole structure works. So it's overall a more advanced structure when it comes to global SEO. It has higher competition because you are competing with more brands since locally in the local proximity, you are confronted with low competition and like lesser, I would say less competitors. Uh, but if you are doing global, then there, there are a lot unless or unless or until you are actually working on, on a really unique idea or a really unique product. Um, like global results, they the, when you when you do global SEO, you want to rank for a particular keyword or search terms or something like that regarding uh, on that particular niche um, uh, all over the world. Um, GMB may or may not apply, so you can you can like apply GMB for every local market. Or this is how you can actually you know kind of reap a fruit of GMB Google My Business. Um, and international languages and localized language languages should be incorporated as a best practice when it comes to global SEO. Okay, this is the evolution for SEO within like last years, you know, like how it's been, uh, how the search is going on. So approximate of 5.4 billion searches are happening every day. Um, overall, these are some really, really nice metrics you can see. So basically searches, uh, 
somebody searches, you know, for something and 13% of the searches, they don't actually yield a click. So nobody clicks it and they just click the back button or maybe search something else. Um, you also see in the search, when you search something, you know, you can see the, ta uh, the ads on top as well. So like Google is also monetizing uh, in terms of like um, people can, you know, advertise their businesses. And that's where that, that way they can also rank in the top of the search uh, by, by bidding on certain keywords. And they can rank on those terms in the top and also the bottom side of Google search results. So 20% clicks are yielded by ads. Paid and organic clicks, so people who are clicking ads and the organic, like SEO results, these are like 10%. And the massive majority, they are like organic clicks. So like people who are actually legitimately ranking organically on the top of the search are yielding around 57% of the total clicks. 35% um, of product searches start on Google. So any product which might get introduced into the world, into the world um, around 35% of the searches happen on Google itself. Um, and another interesting fact is like overall total in total, 63% of total searches happening all over the world um, happen on mobile devices. Since people are more mobile now, they are they are shifting on to handhelds rather than you know sitting up to the screen. People are using desktops, PCs because like for instance, if you're if you're working, if you're in the office or something like that, you're also you're searching from from a particular machine. Yeah. So overall, um, Google index as of 2020 was around 100 million um, GB, so gigabytes large. So overall, they are indexing a lot. Um, on the right, you can see the trends. Uh, so this is the trend for Google. Um, now, why it's dropping? You might be saying, like, you know, why Google is going down. It's actually going up. This is just for people who are using Google search. So overall, what I'm trying to say here is that people are shifting more towards voice search. Um, they have opted in different methodologies to use Google as a search engine. So not all of the people are just kind of searching queries in google.com and getting the results. People are using voice searches. People are using Siri. People are using um, uh, Google Lens. Uh, so overall, like this thing is actually, it will get stagnant, but I'm not saying it's going to go like on zero. But overall, due to the introduction of new technologies and uh, the breakthrough technologies Google is coming up every month, um, these are going down because overall traffic on google.com is reducing because it's getting split up into several sections over here. Overall, you can see all over the world, Google is being used. Uh, more darker means more often, uh, less means lesser because you can see China, Russia, for instance, um, since they are using their own as well. So like Russia, they use Yandex. Uh, China uses Baidu. Um, Okay, so how people search. Um, I wanted to search for, like, give you a perfect blend of keyword research. So basically, every business or every startup or every scale up can actually confront with like four types of uh, uh, terminologies how people search. So they can have a navigational intent. Um, somebody else already knows your brand. Um, they, for instance, just white hat. So people searching for just white hat SEO services can. This can be navigational keyword. Um, informational can be something like, you know, like you want to get some information. So like, what is local SEO? You search for the term and you are confronted with my website. That's something like informational intent. Now, commercial intent can be something in terms of like, you know, somebody wants to buy something. Now, this can be like, you know, uh, a product review or something like that. They have an intent to buy something. So like they're showing their intent in, in terms of reading a review about the product or maybe inquiring about the pricing for the particular product. This can be considered as a commercial keywords. Um, then we have transactional keywords. So transactional means like, you know, you just want it. So for instance, um, let me say, uh, uh, CBD oil uh, for sale near me or something like that or um, online store for CBD products or um, Emirates tickets uh, for sale online or something like that. You know, like you have a transaction intent. You want to buy something and you're searching for something, which definitely means that you are going to make a purchase. That's considered as transactional. Um, moving next. So basically mobile first index. I want to roll it up in the slide because um, this is also a part of uh, the, the, the new beginning of SEO since 2018. Uh, Google has shifted from desktop to mobile. Before you, Google uses use like, you know, like the desktop variant to rank you on both mobile and desktop. Um, 
within 2018, they changed it up. So now Google actually uses your mobile version to rank you on mobile and desktop as well. So doesn't matter how good you are on a desktop screen, you have to make sure that you're accessible on the smaller mobile screen as well. And now when it comes to mobile screen, the size decreases, so does the challenge increases. So you have to make sure that you're above the full content, load up quickly. Anything which is in the desktop is should not be missing on mobile. You can use different layouts, for instance, if I have like a, um, a carousel or I have like maybe a section for the content and I want to uh, introduce an accordion on, on the mobile screen to make sure that it fits in, in a lower space and it can be more interactive. That's something really good. So now you have to go to your brainstorming to come up with something which can increase your layout usage um, and also kind of make your layout valuable for, for the end users. So overall, I go through these points. Google uses mobile as its primary indexation. Um, you have to use the same uh, meta robot tags, for instance, for your title and for description on both ends, because since before you might remember if you are using Facebook, um, we used to had, you know, m.facebook.com. So when you are opening Facebook on mobile, you were opening it on m.facebook.com. So the URLs were not consistent. Now Google wants you to like open one URL, which should be responsive enough for desktop, PDAs, handhelds, iPods, I, sorry, iPads, iPods, iPhones, uh, Android, any screen, you know, like your, your layout should adapt itself to the corners of the screen. Um, don't serve the same content via different URL, as I already discussed. Uh, mobile site should contain the small same content as your desktop site discussed. Um, Structured data, like rich snippets, you might, you know, confront it with when you're searching for something, you see some stars, you see pricing, you see more information in the search than a usual, usual search results. That's like a structured data. You're using same alt attributes across desktop and mobile. There is no cumulative layout shift. That's something when you are scrolling your mobile screen and instantly you feel a jerk because there was an image which was not loaded yet. And when it gets loaded, your, your layout gets shifted down. So that's like a really bad for a user because maybe a user is reading, trying to read something and instantly your image is loading and the content goes away. So that's, that's really bad. You have to make sure that's not there. Uh, and above the co full content is visible under one second. We have been doing it. We like doing it from last year, I think. So we have been focusing more on, on page speed since Google was launching, was due to launch um, a page speed update, which is due in next 20 to 30 days now. Um, and we shifted all the accounts we had um, uh, in our agency um, for all the clients uh, to have load their website under two or three seconds, uh, which was pretty much amazing. We have a good page fee score around like 90 plus. So that's something which we do on a daily basis. Um, okay, so closing it up with partner sites availability, you have to make sure, you know, like when it comes to PR, your, your company might have an in-house PR. You might hire an agency to do your PR as well. You just have to make sure, you know, like some facts before, um, you know, like checking their quality in terms of how it can help or how it can hurt your SEO. So overall, you have to make sure that the index size is more than 2,000 pages. So the website you're getting linked from or like you're getting featured on should have at least more than 2,000 pieces of content or pages within the website. Um, you can actually uh, check it up with like a simple uh, identifier. You can search in Google site colon and the website address, and it will give you search results. As many search results are there, as many pages are there. Uh, niche relevancy, like somebody linking to your website should be something. Uh, for instance, I'm saying uh, I'm having a cannabis brand in the United States, and I am being, being linked up from a fashion blog or maybe like a food blog. Food is something, food and health can be relatable. But let's say I'm, 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 I'm linked from um, a real estate blog, okay? Now, real estate and cannabis, they are not related in any way. Why the hell am I getting linked from them? You know, like that's something quite sketchy. Now, you have to make sure that anything which is linking back to your brand, to your website makes sense. Yeah, if it's not, it's spam. So spam gets caught by Google. You get punished for that and your rankings get lost. Um, you also have to make sure whatever is whatever website or a magazine or a news website is linking to your website should be updated 
uh, on a regular or bi weekly or a weekly basis. Like you can just say, go to the website and see like if there were like some recent updates. Um, did they post it something new? Okay, so like, or maybe like they posted like maybe four years ago. So that's of no use. Um, you should make sure that whatever magazine, website, PR, news, whatever thing is actually linking back to your website should also have some existing SEO traffic because that's a quick identifier that if they have SEO traffic, they're actually good. Google is actually rewarding them. So why, why, why not get the link from them? Um, last but not least is a bit technical. So if, if we are confronted with the founders and CEOs, of course, it's going to be harder for you guys, but still like in terms of mirroring trust, so like you should have to make sure that, you know, in terms of like whoever is linking to you, how trusted their link profile is. So like links to their website, basically. So if I'm, if I am, for instance, um, just white hat gets featured on CNN and now CNN has a pretty much decent link profile. It's trusted link profile. Uh, but if I get links from a, from a website, which has traffic, but their links are sketchy or there's some black hat SEO technique implemented on that site. That might help me in the beginning, but I might lose my rankings in the long run. So you have to make sure that if you are opting into an agency or getting an agency on board, you just have to make sure that, you know, they're, they are doing white hat SEO. They are not black hat. We have three terminologies used in SEO, black hat, gray hat, and um, black hat. So white hat is totally by the books. You do it and you see long reaping results that they don't go away that easily. Gray hat is a mixture of white hat and also some spamming. It can work. It cannot work sometime. Black hat is totally spamming. You can get yourself ranked immediately maybe, but you never know when you are going to just, you know, disappear from the, from the, from the search. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it from my side. Um, I'll just uh, take my questions now. This is our website. This is our uh, details, email. You can also reach me out um on on the chat here so would love to like uh, take any questions um within um the chat if any one of you have something okay thank you very much mr bilal so for those who have questions you can now write it down on the q a tab in the upper right corner of your screen all right So while waiting, while waiting for the questions, do you want to add any words regarding your topic, Mr. Bilal? Uh, well, yes, actually. So basically, SEO as a whole, I would say it's it's a really, really, really complex uh, kind of a niche in marketing. Um, I've been doing it from past 10 years. And to be really honest, uh, I've been fascinated uh, by this particular uh, niche of marketing because of how it evolves all the time. Um, you literally have to keep up, keep up. Um, so basically in terms of every business owner or any business owner over here who are looking forward um, to kind of grow, I would definitely tell you that, you know, SEO is something like the most valuable asset in your marketing arsenal. So just don't miss on that because uh, uh, it can actually bring wonders to any business. Um, we have been watching it. We have been working with quite some corporate enterprise, small and medium businesses accounts from quite a while. And we saw how these businesses view themselves because they actually, you know, like they realized the importance of this particular end of marketing. So just don't miss out over here because SEO means that you're actually optimizing the whole particular um, uh, website and your platform. Now that platform is getting um, uh, you know, uh, kind of used in your social media, your PPC, your YouTube campaigns. So overall, all the digital marketing kind of, you know, correlates with SEO in such a way. So SEO, when you're doing it, you mean it means that you have the best website. Now, if you have the best website, then of course, you know, you're going to be increasing your conversion rate from, from social media marketing as well. You're going to be increasing your conversion rate from, from YouTube. So overall, your ROS, like your ROS values will just, you know, kind of increase dramatically. So um just don't take it i would say so lightly uh seo is is some 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 really good stuff uh which is out there in digital marketing it's not gonna go away as well um and 
last advice would be um, if you are um, looking forward to opt in any SEO expert or consultant and you are getting it really, really cheap, just think about it again and again before doing anything because you cannot change your brand name. You cannot change your domain name regularly. If somebody is spamming, if somebody is hurting you and then getting their fee or whatsoever, you are going to be sitting there in the future just seeing, you know, like what happens really. So just make sure that you cross think again and again before hiring any SEO agency or any SEO expert in even in the house as well, uh, because SEO can amaze you and SEO can also hurt you pretty much badly. So, yeah, I think that that would be uh, something it from my side. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bilal. I don't see any questions right now. I think all the questions are already answered during the presentation because that's very Im informative. All right, perfect. And uh, it was it was lovely to have you all um, attending the session. Um, if you have any uh, regards, any questions after the call, please just do reach out to me or chat. And we'd love to have um, a cool discussion with you all. And yeah, thank you so much, um, uh, Crystal, for having me here. Um, and last uh, for foremost, uh, thanks to the Think Global Conference to just kind of, you know, uh, giving me an opportunity to kind of present today for, in front of all you fine people. And yeah, have a good one, all of you. Okay, if you have uh, more questions to Mr. Bilal or you can, or other concerns, you can definitely contact him to his virtual booth or you can send him directly a message. So Perfect. thank you, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Bilal. See you in the next session. See you. Bye-bye.